Usually when we talk about beauty drama over on TikTok, it normally has to do with Michaela. Ever since Lashgate happened, it felt like it's been one thing after another with her, but lately there's been a shift. Glamzilla seems to be the one causing all the issues in the beauty community lately, and some people think she might be doing it on purpose. It's a mess, so let's get into it. We all know that Michaela was one of the most talked about creators last year in the beauty community, but not for anything positive. If it wasn't Lashgate, it was her not disclosing her sponsorships or lying about things that she liked or didn't like once she was sponsored. Despite everything that happened last year with Michaela, she continued to grow and a lot of people are starting to think Glamzilla is trying to copy the same formula. Last year, the only negative thing that I really saw anyone ever saying about Glamzilla was her not disclosing her ads properly, but lately that's been changing. Ever since she had that viral foundation video, a lot of people feel like she's been trying to chase that virality again, even if it means having to get it by making people upset. Last week, we talked about the whole elf situation where she used the product wrong, she made it look bad on purpose, and completely trashed it. Let's see. Oh no, why did I know? It's very thick. I don't know how some people are giving this positive review. Like that's gross to me. And a lot of people were really annoyed by her review. They said it felt like she went into it with a negative mindset and purposely used it wrong to make people upset. A lot of creators stitched her video trying to show her how to use it properly and one of those creators was Jenna. She made a video showing Glamzilla how to use the product properly and then linked it in her TikTok shop. Now, depending on where you live, you'll either see a paid partnership banner under the video because of that TikTok shop link or you'll see a disclosure saying that the creator is earning a commission. As you guys know, Glamzilla saw the paid partnership banner that us Canadians see because we don't have TikTok shop. She then assumed it was sponsored and accused Jenna and Elf of some marketing scheme to take down her negative review. Elf Cosmetics paid a creator to stitch my video and showcase the pout clout lip plumpers in a positive light. Jenna got a lot of backlash from Glamzilla's accusation, so she made a video clearing her name. She said that her and Glamzilla talked, they realized the misunderstanding, and then Glamzilla removed her video. Here's the thing. The damage at that point had already been done. Glamzilla's video had well over 100,000 views and she never retracted her statement. She accused Elf and another creator of some marketing scheme and never once tried to clear the air. She was so loud when it came to accusing someone, but couldn't even post anything, let alone a comment, just letting people know that she made a mistake. Now, ever since Glamzilla gave Elf that negative review, a ton of beauty creators have been stitching her video and giving them positive reviews. If you have a clap pen, all you need is probably like two to three clicks. One, two, three and you'll have enough product for your lips. And the color payoff is so beautiful that you probably don't need to go too much into it. It's just like a light little like that and look at that color payoff. The only thing that I probably don't like about it is the fact that it is sticky, but you know, it is better than a lot of their glosses. But compared to a lot of the other glosses on the market, this price range, the shade range, iconic, Elf can't be beat. And she is that girl. And I'm not gonna lie, I'll never trust a girl who doesn't like Elf cause Elf is a girl's girl. Even Jeffree Star tried it out and he threw a little bit of shade towards Glamzilla for how she did her review. Oh no, why did I know? It's very- now, One thing I will always do is stand up for Elf because I love affordable makeup, affordable makeup- Jesus, take the wheel. Another day, another beauty controversy. So what's the problem and why was there drama? Well, it's the way that everyone keeps applying this. People are saying they hate it. Some people are saying they love it. Well, as the most unbiased person in the beauty community, I'm here to tell you the truth. They're also saying you can't see the shade label on the bottom. It's right there. The problem that I'm noticing in some people's reviews, they're just putting too much product out. They're clicking this too much. Ready? That's all you need. Have I tried these yet? No! So here's our first impression. Let's go. Ooh, that shade is actually really pretty. What about the texture when you put your lips together? To me, it feels fine. It doesn't feel gummy or weird. I'm not sure what the problem is with everyone, but I think if you click less and just give it a swirl, it definitely is an amazing product. For $8, you get a cute cooling sensation, an amazing shade range. I definitely think 
Glamzilla, you gotta try these out again. Another creator who tried it out was Jacqueline Hill, and she also said that she loved it. Glamzilla did a review on them and she hated them. And I'll be honest, they did not look good on her lips. They looked really goopy and really sticky and just chunky. Overall, not good. But girl, the comment section, the comments came for her. People were being so negative and so nasty trying to cancel her. Over her lipstick! Can you imagine? Cause I can't. So even though she hated the product, I honestly was like, I think I might like that. Go ahead and plump this up. Wait, what the hell am I doing? Okay, yeah, it's coming up. So let's see. Okay, they are like thicker and goopier. Oh, see, I love it. I, instantly, I love it. And I knew in her video, I actually commented on her video and said, even though you hated this, I think I'm gonna love it. Let's do that test to see if it like spider webs when I pull my lips apart. Oh, it's doing it. Like that's gross. No one wants that. But I do this a lot with my other products. Okay, see, it's not doing it now. So clearly the situation has gone a little bit viral in the beauty community on TikTok, and a lot of people think that this is what Glamzilla wants. She's trying to be like the next Michaela by getting attention in any means possible, even if it's negative. Glamzilla could have easily made a follow-up video following everyone's tips and gave the product a fair chance, and also cleared up the accusation that she made against Jenna and Elf. I mean, everyone makes mistakes. We've all thought that something was one way when it was really another way and probably spoke out way too soon and ended up being completely wrong. It's normal, it happens, but it all has to do with how you handle that. And people think Glamzilla isn't handling it in the most productive way. Instead of addressing what happened with her elf review, Glamzilla actually moved on to addressing a whole different issue that she's also been getting called out for lately. A few weeks ago, she made a video reviewing Anastasia Beverly Hills new velvet formula for their liquid lipsticks. She had a lot of shades and it seemed like after the first one, she realized that the formula maybe wasn't for her. These are new at Sephora. They're by Anastasia Beverly Hills and it's their lip velvet formula. Okay, let's see. Here's Pure Hollywood. Oh, it's very matte. Here's Pure Hollywood. It's a pale mauve nude. Instead of stopping there and going, you know what? I don't like how these apply, let me not open the other ones I bought. She continued to swatch them all for her video to make content and then said that she would be returning all of them. Next is Kiss, it's like a peachy pink nude. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. This is Crush, it's like a peachy beige. Here's Peach Amber, it's a deeper, rustier peach. And Parchment is peach with a little bit of brown. After trying these all out, they're on brand. Peach is definitely the color of the year. However, I bought this with my own money and I'm gonna return all of them. I'm not happy with how the formula glides on the lip. I think it's a little bit too matte for me, um, but no, yeah. I like the Fenty Icon Velvet Lips so much more. I think they just glide better, the, the formula looks better. And um, I don't think these shades look good on me. I don't know. What do you think? Have you tried this formula? Do you like it? Did you return it? Let me know. Now, this made a lot of people kind of annoyed because, as you guys know, anything that gets returned to Sephora gets destroyed and thrown away. A lot of comments were saying that her opening every single shade just to make a video and then return them is extremely wasteful. A lot of comments pointed out that she could have donated them to like a woman's shelter or maybe even used them for a giveaway. Glamzilla ended up receiving a lot of backlash over this, so she responded and she didn't really care about what people had to say. I'm going to defend myself for a second because I've seen so many comments recently of people upset that I return things at Sephora. Here's the thing, you're not going to paint me as this girl. I'm going to tell you straight up, I'm one of the few beauty influencers on this in this community that actually buys what she features online. I'm not an influencer that waits for PR or a, a, a beauty event invite to feature something, no. And on top of that, I'm Canadian, so I always get PR packages late. I always get launches late. There's always a later launch for Canada. That's why majority of my reviews are hot fire reviews because I find amazing things that I'm excited about. And if they're hot trash, I'm gonna return it and get my money back. When I review something, I bought it with my own money. And I always think of the 12 year old boy who has $20 for his, who got $20 for his birthday gift. And if he's going to buy a lipstick, it better be hot fire. And I think about that mom who has $25 for her. If she's gonna buy something that I recommend, it better be hot fire. So don't clock me. Don't clock me for returning things. 
because I spent my own money on it. Just like I wouldn't clock you for returning things because you spent your own money on it. Don't pay me as that girl because I work hard to make sure my reviews are A1 for you guys. And I've been in this game too long to waste it on some anything else. You know what I mean? And if you can't rock with that, then unfollow me. I'm okay with that. But I know some people appreciate what I do. And if you don't, deuces. I can understand where she's coming from with us getting launches extremely late. We get everything that comes out in the States at least like three months late. And if this was your job, that would be really frustrating. But why not just purchase one item, try it out. And if you know you're gonna like it, then buy the rest of the shades. If you try it out and you don't like it, at least you have your content for your video without creating all the extra waste. A lot of people were suggesting this to her as well, writing, I don't like how she bought all of them just to return them. Buy one and see if you like the formula. Don't buy all 10 and try all 10. And a lot of other creators were also stitching her video and suggesting the same thing. Kind of see both sides of the issue. The one thing that I can recommend to Glamzilla and anyone else doing these reviews, don't buy everything all at once. Review one and do your honest reaction and all that. And if you really, really like it, go out and buy more a separate day and then tack on your reaction or review to that at the end of that same video just so you don't have to waste your money and it's also not wasting product if you have to return it. People also pointed out how her buying things for her job and then returning them also feels a bit wrong with one person writing, so none of them can be resold. Seems okay if you're purchasing privately, but if it's to fund your job, seems a bit much. Can you imagine if every single beauty creator on TikTok was buying makeup, reviewing it for their video, and then packing it back up and returning it? I think there's a huge difference between your typical consumer buying makeup and then making returns because the product isn't right for them compared to a creator buying makeup, making content with that makeup, opening every single shade to make your content, then returning everything. She's getting the views and building her career by investing in this makeup and reviewing it. To then turn around and return the stuff that you've created content with does seem a bit excessive, but it doesn't sound like Glamzilla really sees the issue here. Now, Glamzilla did put up another video responding to all the backlash that she's been getting lately. Recently, it's been feeling like there's been constant drama with her, and Glamzilla put out this long video saying that this is her dream. Let's talk about all the negative posts and videos and comments that you've been seeing about me online. Listen, what's so funny is my family called me up. Stephanie, we're worried about you. They think my career's over. And my response to them was, babe, it just began. Like, it just began. I remember back in the day, like when I first started, I could only dream. I could only dream of all the comments, views, the videos about me, stitches, all these things. I could only dream of that. She says that she's not going to give up and she's not going to back down to the backlash. Right now, when an influencer is receiving backlash and negative hate and all this stuff, we see them get quiet. We see them go on breaks. We see them get small. Not going to happen here. Not going to happen here because I've worked too damn hard and too damn long to give this up. This, realistically, this is the most... This is the most views I've ever got. This is the most engagement I've ever gotten in my post. I could, like when I tell you, I could have only dreamed of this. It's sad, it's happening in a negative light. But I told you, I'm built differently. I'm not like other influencers. I'm gonna go harder. Dead ass, I'm gonna go harder. When the time is right, when I build the right connections, when I get the right resources, I'm gonna create something for this beauty space for everyone. And it's going to be amazing. And it's this is all going to be worth it. I'll probably stitch this video and I'll say, oh my gosh, it was worth it. Um, but what the greatest part of all this is um, all the content creator friends that I have rooting for me behind the scenes. I like these other influences, girl. Cancel me. Cancel me. Don't <laughs> I want it. I want it. I need it. And this response didn't really sit right with a lot of people. A lot of the backlash that she's been getting is pretty light compared to what some creators get. It's just been people saying like, hey, you didn't use this properly. Here's how you can do it. Or hey, please disclose your ads properly. Or maybe don't return makeup that you're using for content. It's nothing bad. It's constructive criticism that Glamzilla could take on board 
but clearly that's not gonna happen and her comments aren't happy with her. We had people writing, the next Michaela. It's the delivery, not the lipstick. When people give constructive criticism like, oh, you're using it wrong, you're only supposed to click it once, it's more about helping, not hating. And I have to say, it does really feel like she's going down the same path as Michaela. She's getting views and attention by doing things that are making people upset. And as much as that has worked out for Michaela, a lot of people have lost trust for Michaela and her reviews. And if Glimzilla looks up to that kind of attention, then she's definitely on the right track here. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below. And I'll see you next time.